Welcome to the Friday night Sabbath Bible study of the Spirit of Prophecy Church. And uh, I just <laughs> I just had my wife walk in and remind me that I really need to be ending it at 7.30. So I thought I would give it a few minutes extra and go ahead and uh, start early. So let's start with prayer. First of all, Lord, we say great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee when thy judgments are made manifest. From one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before thee. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Lord, we look forward to the time where we can see you at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We can see you being king, your crown, king of kings and lord of lords. And Lord, we gather tonight in your name because you said that wherever two more gather in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And Lord, we know that wisdom and might are yours. You change the times and seasons. You removeth kings and setteth up kings. You giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them no understanding. You revealeth the deep and secret things. You knoweth what is in the darkness, the light dwelleth with you. Lord, we ask that you would show us the deep and secret things in your word. Help us to understand your word. Help us to be prepared so you can use us in that day to be a witness for you. So we can all do your perfect will to cross into eternity to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so... We're going to talk about Bible prophecy tonight. <laughs> We're going to talk about the day of the Lord. So if you got your paper Bible or your electronic Bible handy and you want to go to Revelation 19, I'm going to start there, but we're only going to breeze through that. And then we're going to jump into, I think will be some surprising scriptures. I think that you are going to come away tonight with a different, a more deeper, a more um, well-balanced understanding of what the day of the Lord is. Now, what is the day of the Lord? Isaiah 17, 14, I don't think we're, or, or maybe it's 17, yeah, 17, 14 says, in the evening they are, in the morning they are not, meaning it is literally less than 24 hours. It is the last day of time, and on that day, time stops. There will be no more time. And on the day of the Lord, when Jesus returns, is when we get our glorified body. It's less than, and again, we'll cover all of that, and I'm going to show you in the scriptures some amazing things. Okay, so let's start with first Revelation chapter 19. If you got your Bible, go to it, Revelation 19. Now I'm going to move quickly because we got lots to cover. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation. So the very first word that you and I say when we are at the marriage supper of the Lamb, which is about four months before Armageddon, uh, it's not a rapture at this point. Probably most of the Christians are already dead anyway. So a rapture is pertaining to that's how God is going to protect us by pulling us in the air. He is going to protect us, but he's not going to protect us by pulling in the air. And some of us will glorify his name by giving our life. And that's going to be okay too. Hallelujah. Salvation. Glory, honor, and power to the Lord our God, for true and righteous are his judgments. In other words, this is the day of the Lord. Jesus is about to return. Now, let me let me back up. This is at the marriage supper of the Lamb. This is not trumpets. This is the, the feast of Pentecost. True and righteous are his judgments, for his judge the great whore. So the Russian bombs, I believe this is where they came down. As the bombs come down, if I can see my hand here. As the bombs come down, I believe we go up. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. True and righteous are his judgment, for he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again, they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Now, this is where the fall of America takes place. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, let's jump down to, uh, I didn't want to go that far. Hang on here. I saw heaven open. This is where now. Now this is four months later. This is at Feast of Trumpets. This is Armageddon. 
I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him is called Faithful and True and in Righteousness. He doth judge and make war. This is Armageddon. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. So now he is glorified. Before, when he came down in the lamb body for the feast of first fruits, he was not glorified. When he goes to the marriage supper of the lamb, he's not glorified. That is the coronation. That is him changing from lamb to lion, changing from becoming uh, from the prince of the kings of the earth, as he is now, to become the king of kings and lord of lords. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. He had a name written which no man knew but him himself, and he was clothed with vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies which are in heaven, that's us along with the other angels, armies in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. What's the fine linen? It's the wedding garment. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. What's the sharp sword? That's the morning star, where he goes and blows his morning star down. Now, he, he didn't have that before the marriage supper of the Lamb. He gets that at the marriage supper of the Lamb, where he's given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. Let's go on. Our, and he shall tread the wine press and the fierceness of wrath of Almighty God. He hath on his vesture, that's here, and on his thigh, a name and King of kings and Lord of lords. So prior to that, prior to the marriage supper of the Lamb, he was not glorified. He was still in a lamb body. All right, now we're going to jump, jump a lot. We're going to be jumping all over the place tonight. Okay, we're going to go to Isaiah, or excuse me, Psalm 18. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. So in the time of the, this is talking about the day of the Lord, God is our deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. In other words, high tower, he is our watcher. He is what watches out for us. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. This is specifically given to Israel and the children of Abraham that are about to go through the Armageddon, about to have Russia and all the other nations come down to attack her. The sorrows of death come past me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Armageddon. The sorrows of hell come past me about and the snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. Okay, that's Isaiah 24. The earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. Remember, the earth shakes for 10 days from the Feast of Trumpets to the Feast of Atonement, which is 10 days. And then he brings down the new heaven and new earth. And that's where every high place falls, every valley is filled in. There's no more sea. Verse 8. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, that's the morning star, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens. Now, what does that mean? Remember in Revelation here, I'll just, since we can do this so quickly, uh, Psalm 18, 9. Let me jump to. Ah, I keep forgetting to do that. I don't like the way this works. I don't like the way this works. I want to be able to jump around quickly. Okay, let's go to Revelation 6. Wait a minute. Well, that's about. Hang on. I don't, I don't like this. I want to be able to pop around. Revelation 6, about verse uh, 14 or 15, somewhere in there. Yeah. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sat upon the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great devil's wrath, that's what we're talking about tonight, for the great devil's wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Now let's go back to Psalm 8. He bowed the heavens. That's what he's talking about. Uh, when darkness entered into time, that's where the heavens roll back like a scroll. Also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. If I can get to the right button here. And he rode upon a cherub, that would be a horse, and did fly, yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. See, when darkness, if you go back into Revelation, excuse me, Genesis 6, 
there was darkness before there was light because darkness is eternity. So when the heavens roll back like a scroll, they roll back because darkness, which is eternity, is entering into time. He made darkness his secret pavilion. Round about him were dark waters and thick clouds and skies. Maybe the scripture says, Woe to those that desire a day of the Lord, for it is not a day of darkness, but of thick clouds and darkness. Matter of fact, I think we may even be here. Uh, the brightness of before him, his thick clouds passed, hail, stones, and coals of fire, describing the morning fire or the morning star. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he set out his arrows, that's the morning star, and scattered, and scattered them, and he shot out the lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of the waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at the, thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, that's the morning star. He got that at the marriage supper of the Lamb. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of the waters. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Other books were opened, other book was opened. That's what he's talking about. Uh, the seed delivered up the dead which are in them. Death and hell delivered up the dead which are in them. That's an atonement. He delivered them from my strong army, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of calamity, but the Lord was my stay. Now let me jump. Let me jump. Now let's go to Psalm 97. The hills met like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. And the heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. What's his glory? It's the morning star. The morning star goes to the center of the earth, sets the foundations of the mountains on fire. I think we're about to read that. Confounded be all they that serve the graven image, images that boast themselves at the idols. Okay, let's see. Let me go on now to... We're going to jump. We're gonna show, I'll show you a bunch of stuff tonight. If it'll let me, it's not this crazy program. It's not letting me jump. We'll do it another way then. All right. The Lord shall build up Zion. He shall appear in his glory. Okay. Something real important there. We know about his glory. But what's this? The Lord shall build up Zion. That's when they shall beat their, plow, their, their printing hooks in beat their pruning hooks into swords. In other words, he gives the people in Israel a supernatural strength because they're about to be doing a battle against the whole world. Skip on to the next one. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So he's about to make Israel the wealthiest, strongest nation on earth in preparation for Armageddon, where he's going to destroy the armies coming down to attack her. Jump to Isaiah 2.19. And they shall go into the whole... By the way, th this is from years of study. So the program I have, I'm, I can put it all into like a file, all of these. And for this, I looked up my research on Armageddon. And this was a file that, I don't know, I might have made this. I might have started this research 25, 30 years ago, maybe even longer than that. But it's, I've compiled this over many, many years. And that's it's all talking about Armageddon. They shall go into the holes and the rocks into the caves of the earth for the fear of the Lord. That's straight out of what we just read in Revelation 6. And for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth terribly. Why does he shake the earth? Because he destroys the old heaven and the old earth. He makes a new heaven and a new earth, and there was no more sea. Every high place falls, every valley fills in. In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, and they which made every one for himself to worship to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and to the tops of the ragged rocks for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. And he arises to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, that's the morning star. For wherein is he to be accounted of? Now let's jump to five. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. The vineyard is the sinner's. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. In other words, the people of the world that should have turned to him did not. And now I go. I will tell you what I do in my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, 
and it shall be beaten, eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Oops. I think I just, no, I didn't. Okay. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns, and I will command the clouds that they rain, no rain upon us. So all of this is the judgment that he's trying to bring forth out of his vineyard. Now let's jump to verse 24. Therefore is the fire devoureth the stubble. What's the stubble? Well, when you harvest wheat, you cut the wheat. And then in the old days, they took a flail, which is kind of like nunchucks, which is where nunchucks came from, if you're any of the karate stuff, which is two straight sticks, and they attach it with a chain or a rope or a piece of leather. And then they use that to beat the wheat. It's called a flail. And that way the vibration doesn't travel up and into the hands of the person hitting the wheat. So they hit the wheat and that separates the chaff. Now around each little wheat corn, a wheat kernel or berry, they called them, are these light coverings and they're kind of like fly wings. They're very, very thin. That's the chaff. And then, of course, you have the leaves and then the stalks or the sticks. So when he's talking about the, stout, the stubble, he's talking about removing all of the things around the wheat so he has just pure wheat. Wheat represents the Gentiles. Barley represents the Jews. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, that's the morning star, taking care of all of the tares, and the flame consumeth the chaff. The chaff is the leaves and also the stalks and things. So their root shall be rottenness, and their blossoms shall go up as dust. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. And he has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten them. And the hills did tremble. And the carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Uh, let me jump down to, now we're back on the day of the Lord, whose arrows are sharp. And all his bows bent, their horses' hoofs shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion, and they shall roar like young lions. Yea, they shall roar, and they hold on the prayer, pray, and shall carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. And in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. If one look upon the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. Remember, the sun goes out. In the, in the, in the, in the fifth, yes, fourth vial, sun goes out. Fifth vial, it is totally dark and there is no light on the earth. I mean, so we got 96 hours before of just total darkness. That's the reason there's great hailstones. Every stone about the weight of a talent because the earth gets dark. I mean, it gets, gets dark and it goes cold. Now let's jump to 10, Isaiah 10, 5. Oh, Assyrian. There's two or three places in the Bible where the Bible calls the Antichrist the Assyrian. That's a pretty good hint. He probably comes from the general area of Assyria. Yeah. Just because he's from Assyria doesn't necessarily mean that we will see him come from Assyria. Uh, he could still be Assyrian and come from Russia. You see what I'm saying? Oh, Assyrian, the rod of mine anger. And the staff in their hand is my indignation. Now, we've talked about a couple of weeks ago, just about every time the, uh, the scriptures mention indignation, almost without exception, it is talking about the day of the Lord, the indignation. I will send against my hypocritical, na hypocritical nation and against the people of my wrath will I give a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets Howbeit he means not so, neither does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. He's talking about the Antichrist. Shall I not, as I have done in Samaria and her others, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? So he's going to remove the idols. Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion, wait a minute, what's the difference between Mount Zion? I just talked about this. I think of today's program. Mount Zion is where Jesus returns in Revelation 14. I looked and lo, a lamb stood upon the Mount Zion. But in Zechariah 14, this is where Jesus sets his foot down on the Mount of Olives. That's Armageddon. That's what we're talking about tonight. 
So when he's performed his whole work in Mount Zion, what is he doing there? He walks around with 144,000 for 50 days exactly. Then he takes the barley and the wheat, or the Jews and the Christians, or the Gentiles, up to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So when he's saying he's finished his whole work in, in, on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, he's saying, I have done my best to try to get these people to repent and to receive me, and either they did or they didn't. So when the Lord had performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart and the king of Assyria and the glory of high looks. For he saith, by my strength of my hand, I have done it, talking about the Antichrist, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. My hand hath found a nest in the riches of the people, and one gathereth eggs that are left, and I have gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing, nor opened the mouth, nor peeped. In other words, he's going to gather all the nations down to attack Israel. Let me jump down to 16. Yep. Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat one leanness, and another, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. There is the morning star again. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame. And it shall burn, this is important, and devour his thorns and his briars in one day. Literally, it's not even total 24 hours. This next one's real important. And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainteth. In other words, when he, the morning star hits them, they they just drop like a wet noodle, like a wet rope. They just boom, they just fall to the ground right then, right there. There's no flopping around. <laughs> There's no, they're just boom, they're down. And here's where it says, and they destroy both body and soul. So let me say it again. Burning of fire, he uses the light sword or the breath of his nostrils. For fire, he will burn and it will be like thorns and briars. And it all burns in one day. I think in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, the way I see this, I see it as when he blows his, his morning star down, it goes to the center of the earth. It sets the foundations of the mountains on fire. As we read last, well, not last week, I was at a conference. Two weeks ago, I showed you where it dissolves the sun, the moon, and the stars, everything, okay? And it dissolves all of the, the tares. And then the two angels with their sharp sickles slash the grapes, the grapes of the nations that pretty much had no Christians in them. And then it says, and devours uh, uh, the, the thorns and the briars in one day, consumes both body and soul. That's Those are very, very important verses to understand what it's talking about here. Body and soul in one day, and the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few. The child may write them. In other words, the people that survive this is going to be few. But the ones that do survive to the end shall be saved. Now, that doesn't mean they get their name in the book of life, but they are told, look, we're going to let you live. But if you sin, if you break one law, that's the reason it says a rod of iron. In other words, they're not allowed to break any of his laws. If they break one law, then a morning star judge shows up at the speed of thought, which is faster than the speed of light and hits them with a morning star. They fall to the ground, a pile of ashes and bones. It's instant judgment right then, right there. Now we go to Isaiah 10, 20. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped out of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob and to the mighty God, for though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian, that's the Antichrist. He shall smite thee with the rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee after the man of Egypt. Yet for a very little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger 
in their destruction. So when you see the Antichrist come upon the land of Israel, don't worry. It's only going to be a brief time. Then he's going to take care of them. That's what it's really saying. Now let's jump to Isaiah 13, this whole chapter. Matter of fact, I think we've read this uh, not too long ago. See how we're doing on time. Uh, do I want to read this one again? Do I want to read this one again? Maybe not. Let's jump to Isaiah 24. i got lots to cover. Okay. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, and maketh it waste, and turneth it upside, upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. So the earth literally turns upside down. Now, some people say that the earth actually is now already upside down, and when he turns it upside down again, it's actually going to be making it correct. I don't know that that's true, but I've heard that. And shall be as with people, so with priest, as with a servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with the mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. In other words, everybody's infected by this. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord has spoken his word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. <laughs> now, I heard one time that the energy in coal is 60% more than the wood we have today, meaning probably the energy that was in the world before the flood was probably 60% more. I know that when Ron Wyatt found these large anchor stones, and I was there, okay, I've touched them, I've looked at them, I've taken pictures and video of them. You know, again, I've walked all over Noah's Ark, I've been on Mount Sinai, I've been inside Jesus' tomb. I mean, God has allowed me to see some amazing things. But every one of them had the circumference of a tree that was probably, I'm going to say, 30 to 50 feet across. In other words, it was almost, this, this was the bark of the trees, what covered the top of the ark. And then the uh, anchor stones were apparently made out of that too. Anyway, it was whatever it was, it was from a very, very large tree. So the earth today mourneth and, and languisheth. The word languisheth there means that it's lost all of its energy, that the earth, I mean, we have to put all kinds of bug killers and uh, fertilizer and nitrogen, and all kinds of things in the soil to get anything to come out of it because the earth doesn't have the energy that it used to be. I think that before the flood, man, they, <laughs> I mean, things just grew. Um, of course, so did uh, all the bad things. But I mean, it, there, there was an energy in the earth that we do not have ever since the flood. So I'll read that verse again. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. And the haughty people, those are the people that don't think they need Jesus, the haughty people of the earth do languish. And the earth also was defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they've transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant. So God destroys the earth again. Therefore hath a curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell there are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. That's a very important verse right there. So the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. I'll just mark that. Boom. Few men left. In other words, by the time Jesus returns, already few men are left alive. But then after the burning, <laughs> just about all of them are gone. The new why, oh, here we go. Okay, let's jump to Isaiah 24, 17. Fear in the pit and the snare upon thee. O inhabitants of the earth, and it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. So these are just the sinners that are running left, running right, trying to survive, but they're not going to survive because he's, Jesus is trying to get them to repent and receive him. I mean, that's the whole everlasting gospel. I heard another loud voice, another angel flying through, mid, through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, cried with a loud voice to all those who dwell upon the earth, fear God, worship him, and worship him that made the heavens and the seas and the fountains of waters. That's essentially the gospel. In other words, 
there's your last chance if you want to go to the married supper of the Lamb. Anyway, uh, I'll read it again. It shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. He that cometh out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. So this is very near the day of the Lord. The earth is utterly broken, and the earth is clean dissolved. Why? Because every mountain has fallen, every valley is filled in, there's no more sea. The earth is clean dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage. A cottage is like a hammock. Okay, like, you know, we swing in, like blowing in the wind. That's what a cottage is. And their transgression there shall be heavy on it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Now, those are important words. So in case you're thinking, oh, well, there's probably another time where there's going to be another earth created, another Jesus has to be crucified. No, no, it doesn't happen again. It shall not. It shall fall and not rise again. There will never be another earth. There will never be another Adam and Eve, none of that. It ever, ever comes again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Now, as I've explained, the next time he returns, he returns two more times. The next time he returns to Mount Zion, I looked and the Lord Lamb stood upon the Mount Zion, Revelation 14, 1. Then you jump to Zechariah 14. It has him coming down to the Mount of Olives, two different places. It's about a 30-minute walk between the two places. So what he's saying here is in Mount Zion. So he's going to do a work there gloriously. Now we jump to Isaiah 30, verse 25. And there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. What's that? What's every high place falls, every wall place, all, every wall falls, and every valley is filled in because he's shaking the earth. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the day, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold, as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people. Bindeth up the breach of his people. What does that mean? It means that that's the day that he pours clean water on them. They haven't accepted Jesus. He just forgives their sin. Because if he didn't, he couldn't do Armageddon. So this is about three days before Jesus returns. He just forgives all of them. Just forgives them. And just before the darkness, the sun gets seven times hotter, and then it totally goes out. Now, have you ever walked into a room, flipped the light, and the light went really, really bright, and then it burned out? Same thing with the sun. The sun goes seven times hotter, and then it just goes black, black as sackcloth of hair. Seven days in the day the Lord binded up the breach of his people. He just forgives them. So when you see the sun goes seven times hotter, dawn about or around that is when Jesus just forgives all their sins, even though they haven't accepted him. You know, it's his blood. He can do that. And heal with the stroke of their wound. Behold, the name of the Lord cometh from far, burning with anger, and with the burden thereof is heavy, and his lips are full of indignation. Again, that's Armageddon. And his tongue is a devouring fire. His breath is an overflowing stream. Shall reach to the midst of the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of vanity, and there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. What's that? That's the hook in the jaws of the Russians because I think they ran out of oil and that's the reason they come down on horseback with buckler and shield and handling sword because they ran out of oil because God gave all of the oil to Israel. Yeah, and here, here, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'll skip that. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. Remember where it says in the voice of the Lord, and shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel. Remember? That's what he's talking about. The Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and show the lightning down his arm. So he goes, and the lightning goes down his arm. With the indignation of his anger, with the flame of a devouring fire, 
with scattering and tempest and hailstones. <laughs> so, I mean, as lightning shineth even from the east unto the west, so also shall the coming of the Son of the Man be. Through his voice, the Lord shall, uh, through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. So, what happens to the Antichrist? Morning star burns away his body, but not his soul. His soul is tossed into the lake that burns the fire and brimstone. There's there's three there's four groups of people there: the beast, the false prophet, and the antichrist, and then the other people that took the mark of the beast. And in every place where the grounded staff shall pass, which the Lord shall lay upon him, it shall be with tabrets and harps and battles of shaking will he fight with it. For Tufet is ordained of old, yea, the king is prepared. He hath made it deep and large, the pile thereof is fire and much wood, and the breath of the Lord, that's the morning star again, like a stream of brimstone doth kindle it. Now, I sense in the spirit I need to, to pause. I'm going I'm to come back to Isaiah 30, 33 here, but I want to take you over. I have to do a little search here for a second. Okay, so let's go. Remember where, maybe be easier for me if I can quote it. Okay, remember, and I shall give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks stand before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of his mouth, and devoureth, devoureth, devoureth his enemies. And if, any will hurt them, if any man will hurt them, it must in this manner be killed. Uh, and then what's the other place? And he that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end, the same will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as the vessels of a potter, they shall be broken to shivers, that's ashes, even as are received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. So that's the morning star. And then uh, back when we I saw heaven opened and we read that earlier and you skip on down. And the remnant were slain by the sword of him that sat on the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. That's the morning star. That's what he's talking about here. I'll read that again. For Tophet is ordained of old. Yea, for the king is prepared. He hath made it deep and large. The pile thereof is fire and much word, much wood. The breath of the Lord, like the stream of brimstone, doth kindle it. Jump to 33.5. The Lord is exalted. For he dwelleth on high, he hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. And remember, Zion is where he returned for the 144,000. Now let's jump to verse 8. The highways lie waste, the wayfaring man seeth it. He hath broken the covenant, he has despised the cities, he regardeth no man. The earth mourneth and languisheth, we're talking about, it's old like a garment. Lebanon is ashamed and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness, and Bashan and Carmel Shake off the fruits. Now I will arise, saith the Lord. Now I will be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. You shall conceive chaff. You shall bring forth stubble. That's the morning star burning the tares. Your breath as fire shall devour you. And the people shall be as burnings of lime. Lime is burns. As, it's one of the hottest things on earth to burn. Matter of fact, you've heard people say, well, he's in the limelight. Okay. Where does that come from? In the olden days, before electricity, they would take lime and they would put it in these buckets where they, uh, uh, with, with like a, a bright, shiny kind of a mirror in the back, and then it had lime down here, and that aimed up, shining the light upon the stage. And then the people uh, in, in, the, in the audience sat in dark, and they, the lime, the light from the lime, shined up on the stage, and that's the reason it said, oh, he's in the limelight means that he was on stage with bright lights that they had of the day shining on him. So when it says burnings of lime, lime burns very, very hot. So the morning star is very, very hot. Burnings of lime as thorns cut up, shall they be burned in the fire. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Now, I gotta write that down. We we gotta. I, I gotta jump to something here. I need to have a notepad. Where's a notepad? Right quick, man. Surely I got a notepad here someplace. Okay, here we go. We're gonna come back to that. 
Isaiah 42, 13. Now, what was I talking about? Don't hold my thought as long as I used to. Strap and Johnson, mind and water, his cry roar and prevail against his enemies. Well, now I forgot it. Okay. Have it a little, try to do it a little bit faster next time. Okay. I have long time holding my peace. I've been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. In the evening they are, in the morning they are not. Let me, let me show you that. Let's jump to uh, Isaiah 17, 14, I believe. And behold, at evening tide trouble, and before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, talking about the Jews, and the lot of them that rob us. So this is saying that the day of the Lord is less than 24 hours. In the evening he is, and the morning he is not. Boom. That's pretty big. Now let's go back to Isaiah 42, 14. A trailer, remember also, has uh, a word... Uh, to prevail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So this ties together. It's the same event. I will make waste mountains and hills, and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the waste. I will make the rivers islands, and I will dry up the. the I will dry. If I agree, I will dry up the pools, and I will bring the blind by way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. What's he saying? Every mountain falls, every valley fills in, the earth turns into a nice round smooth ball. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Now let's jump to some of the most famous verses. Arise, shine, for the light has come. What light? See, the earth, the sun goes out on the fifth vial. Fourth vial it goes out, gets seven times hotter, and then by the fifth vial is out. So we have 72 hours, oh, excuse me, 96 hours, right? 96 hours of darkness before Jesus returns. Then when Jesus returns, this is fulfilled. Arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So that's when, even though we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we do not get anything but a wedding garment. We do not get any of our rewards. Then we get a, a white horse to ride behind. There's Jesus. Behind Jesus is two sickles that have <laughs> two angels that have sickles, the armies in heaven, and then the guests at the wedding feast. And you and I are going to be there. So then we ride back. We see Jesus blow the morning star down. He cleanses the earth. And as that morning star comes out of his mouth, it doesn't just hit the earth, it dissolves the sun, the moon, and the stars. It hits us, it hits the terrors. It, Everything, 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 everything is hit by this morning star. As it hits us, out of our belly flows rivers of living water. Just that quick, we get our mantles, our crowns, our rewards, our garments, our everything, everything, everything. For us at that moment, eternity starts. We never hunger again, thirst again. Neither shall the sun light on us, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed us and lead us into the living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. From that moment, that's us. That's what it's talking about. Arise, shine, for the light has come. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. It's good news. And the Gentiles shall come into thy light, and the kings of the brightness of thy rising. Now, what's that saying? Well, those people that endured to the end, but they did not receive Jesus, but they didn't take the mark of the beast either. They're allowed to live up to a thousand years. And at the end of the thousand years, Satan is loosed out of his kingdom. He goes out to de deceive the, the, the nations of the earth. And they gather them together, Gog and Magog, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, fire from God from came down from heaven and devoured them. So that's at the end of the, the tribulation. I know everybody gets that all mixed up, but that's the way it really happens. Again, get my book, get my book, get my book. Secret door to understand Bible prophecy. You got to get it. Uh, one of the, in the, one of the visions, the Lord told me that some things cannot be understood by audio and video. It means I, I can't make 
I can talk to you all day long, video wise, audio wise. You won't understand it. He said, write it in a book because some things they must read to understand it. And in the back of it, it has these charts. I've talked about this a lot. It has these charts. It'll help you understand it. If you want to teach it, you want to order the Watchman's package. All right, let's go on. So the Gentiles should come to the end, the kings of the bright kings to the brightness of the coming. Now, what's that saying? I could take you into Revelation, but it'll get me off my track today. But it says, and the, and the Gentiles shall bring their glory and honor unto the, the, uh, uh, unto the New Jerusalem. And I think it's saying that when we are in the millennium, now we're in eternity, but the people that didn't take the mark, they didn't receive Jesus either, and they will bring fruits. And I'm going to guess we're talking about grapes the size of a football. Okay, we're talking about bananas the size of a baseball bat. Uh, bring the fruits because we're talking about the earth. The, the curse is removed and they will live to be the age of a tree. They will probably have a new child every year and probably every one of the eligible women will be having a child every year because there is the sand of the sea after a thousand years. So it is happy days are here again except for they don't get eternal life. And the Gentiles should come to thy light, and kings of the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes, whoops, wait a minute, lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to, to thee, the sons shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged. And I didn't mean to have a large heart and you're going to have a heart attack. That means you're going to be very, 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 very happy. Your heart is going to be enlarged because the abundance of the sea is converted unto thee and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. That is talking about the abundance of, in other words, the natural gas coming from the sea. So all of a sudden we jump out of the millennium. Now we're talking about just prior to the return of Jesus. And let me jump and see where we go from here. I hope you're getting a lot out of this. Uh, verse 5. I want to go to here. Now we're going to go to there. It's not letting me go. All right, fine. We'll do it the hard way. There we go. The sun shall no more be the light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give the light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. And I'll take you into Revelation and show you that too. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. He literally, Jesus, literally is the light of the world. And when the sun goes out, it never relights again. Jesus in the top, he lives in the top part of the New Jerusalem that is made of solid gold, that is transparent as glass, is as clear as glass, and he shines out of the top of that and it's about 250 miles square, so it stands on the earth, 250 miles below the earth, and that, that light goes out every place around the earth. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. The people also shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. The little one, shall become a thousand, and a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So there's an energy that comes out of that light like I don't think the earth ever has felt before. I think that he saved the best land, wine for last. The earth that was made for Adam and Eve doesn't hold a candle, I guess that's the right way to say it, to the new heaven and in the new earth. Now let's jump to 6517. For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to bind. So I think the way this happens, when the when the glory comes down and we get hit with our glorified body, and we come out of time into eternity, my understanding would be it's like holding a fishing rod. You can look back at that fishing rod, and, you look, and that rod represents time. 
and you can see any place uh, along that. I can't get you to see it here. Let me let me do this. There. I don't know if you can still see it. I can't see my hand here. Okay, let's say let's see my let's hear Okay, let's say my pen represents time. So we're able to jump out here and look at any point. You want to go back and see Adam and Eve? You want to find out where those thirty-three thousand uh, emails got lost from from Hillary Clinton? See, we'd be able to see anything, anything in that time, because the Bible says everything hidden is shattered from the rooftops. Everything that is uh, hidden is open, made manifest. Everything. For whatever reason, I can't quote it right now. But anyway, if we get to see everything, then apparently this says that when he makes a new heaven and a new earth, we will not remember anything from this entire life. Yet we will know each other as they are known. Uh, Henry Gruber said when he, he was in heaven, he was he saw people wearing the garments, and he said the white garment looked like it was alive. And as you started getting close to someone, the white garment began to speak and tell you of what this person had done for the Lord. And that was the glory, their glory. I create a new heaven and new earth, for the former shall not be remembered nor come to my mind. But ye be glad and rejoice forever in that I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and our people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall no more thence an infant of days, nor a, a man that hath not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses. It's not us. These are the people that didn't take the mark, but they didn't receive Jesus either. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, what's that? Up to a thousand years. For days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Now, if they didn't receive Jesus, they don't get their name in the book of life. They don't get eternal life. But they didn't take the mark, so they're not destroyed. So they're, they are the corners, not harvested. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. They are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Now let's jump to 65, 25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullet. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat, and they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. 66, 10. Rejoice ye, Jerusalem, and be glad with her all that love her. Rejoice for her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her that you may suck and be satisfied with the breast of her consolations, that you may milk out, see that gray? I think I was talking about crude oil. Me, milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her joy. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river. She doesn't have, Israel doesn't have peace right now, but it's coming. And it's coming associated with milk out. There's another place that says, um, I better read this because this might be it. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream that you shall suck. You shall be born on her sides and be dandled on her knees. There's another place that says, And they, the, the oil will come squirting out like the breast of a fair maiden. Another one says it will come squirting out like squeezing a grape. In other words, it's a gusher squirting out. <sighs> As one whom his mother com comforteth, so will I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire, there's your morning star again, and with chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. I want to cover that. Let me see. Where are we here? We are running out of time. That's where we are. 
jump to here. It's hard to change. It's not cooperating. Okay, bear with me. I got to flip to get in there. Yeah, I better read this. Okay, here. It shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Now, wait a minute. You'd be saying, wait a minute. I thought they fall to the ground in a pile of ashes and bones. They do, if they're hit with a morning star. But the angel with the sharp sickle slashes the grapes. And that's what causes the blood to rise to the horse bridles by the space of 1,600 furlongs. That's what this is talking about. Look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For the worm shall not die, neither shall the fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring to all flesh. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with a cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. When I will put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars dark, thereof dark, and I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light, and the bright lights of the heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land. I will also vex the hearts of many people which shall bring thy destruction among the nations and to the countries which thou shalt not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their kings shall be horribly, horribly afraid of thee. When I will brandish my sword. That's the morning star. When he brandishes his sword. Okay, we just read Ezekiel 38. So I don't see, I, I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, I'm going to skip this. and I can't get it to skip easily, sorry. I just got to bump through this, so if you can... Quickly read that. Hang on. I've got more. I've got lots. We can't cover everything I've got. Hang on. We're about there. Okay. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down in the ancient of days did sit. This is talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb whose garment was white as snow, and his hair as his head as pure wool. This is the Father. His throne was like the fiery flame in his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth before him. A thousand thousand men stood under him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were open. I beheld because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. Then I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Now, not his soul. Only his body is destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season of time. Meaning, if they didn't take the mark of the beast, then they are allowed to live for a season and a time, which is approximately a thousand years. Now, where do I want to go from here? Yeah. Ah, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. This is the marriage. This is where the Son comes to the marriage. And became the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Therefore shall the land mourn. Now we're jumping to Hosea 4.3. And everyone that dwelleth there shall languish with the beasts of the field, with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea shall also be taken away, because there is no more sea. Okay, everything in the sea dies when sea became blood. That's the second vial. Uh, rivers and fountains became blood. That's the third vial. So uh, like about in the last week, everything in the, in the sea dies. And when he shakes, he fills in the sea. Now let's jump to Joel 1.4. Sanctify your fast. This is when the people of Israel are warned to get ready. Armageddon is coming. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord or your God. And cry unto the Lord. Alas, for the day. For the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. It shall not the meat, is not the meat cut off from before our eyes. Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. I remember that when Kim Peter said he saw what started the tribulation, 
And he said, it was all of a sudden, all the joy and gladness left the earth. Like the Holy Spirit left the earth. And he said, everybody looked like they just walked out of their mother's funeral. That's kind of what this is describing. Joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under the clods. The garners are waste desolate and the barns are broken down for the corners withered. Do the beasts grew, groan? Do the herds of cattle are perplexed? Because they have no pasture, yea, the flocks of the sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee will I cry, for the fire that hath devoured the pastures in the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the fields cry also unto thee, and the rivers of the waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Blow to the trumpet in Zion. So this, here is Armageddon, and we're probably going to close with this. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm of my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at his hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a, a day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, as a great people strong, there hath not been the light. So we're talking about everything the devil can throw at Jesus. He is trying to defeat Jesus. So we've got all of the fallen ones, all of the giants, the Nephilim, all of their high technology that they've been able to develop over the last 6,000 years, uh, super soldiers, everything, 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 everything that they've got. They're throwing at Israel, trying to get Jesus to return, and he does, and trying to defeat him, and they don't. <laughs> but he's, see, the devil has believed his own lies. Morning, uh, let me read that. As darkness and gloominess of the day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and strong. There hath not ever been the light, neither shall any more after it. Even to the years of many generations, this is the devil's army. A fire devoureth before them. Behind them a flame burneth, kind of what had happened to Maui. The land is a garden of Eden before them, but behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance is as the appearance of horses and as horse men. I think that's talking about half man, half horse. So shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. As a strong people set in battle of array. This is the world led by the Russians coming down to attack Israel. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. I think that's because the sun got seven times hotter and all flesh on the earth turned black. I don't know what it is, some kind of a different kind of array. All flesh turned black. They shall run like mighty men, super soldiers. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when he fall upon a sword, they shall not be wounded. Now, either that means they have some kind of a coating that a sword won't go into, but this is what I believe. I believe the sword goes in, they pull it out, and they have instant healing. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter at the windows like a, a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sign of the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining. What happened? How do you get the stars to withdraw their shining? It's because Jesus is about to return. His morning star dissolves the sun, the moon, and the stars. Dissolves them all. Dissolves all of these people. Dissolves them. Okay. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping. And now he's talking to the Jews. Fasting, weeping, and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, and slow to anger with great kindness. He repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion. Amen. Amen. Didn't jump up where I wanted. Blood the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify fast. Call a, sem a solemn assembly. Why? Because the Russians are outside of Jerusalem. All the world, the devil, everything he's got, all kinds of high technology that we've never seen or thought of. They're doing everything they can to kill every Jew that is now pretty much uh, J Joel 39, the last verse in Joel, excuse me, Ezekiel 39 says, I will leave none of them there. So every Jew at this point, every Jew on the planet has returned to Israel. And that's what the Russians and all of our buddies are all coming down to kill all of the Jews, and Jesus returns to stop it. 
gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Means everybody, everybody, everybody got to join in this fight. Let the priests and the minister of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare thy people, O Lord. He's given them the prayer to say. Give not thine hand heritage to reproach. And to the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is our God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil. You shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you approach among the heathen. In other words, Things are about to change. But I'll remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up. His ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the Lord, for the tree beareth her fruit and the fig tree and the vine do yield her strength. Be glad, then, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. So that's after he returns. So what he's saying is he's going to return and save them. And he's going to do a mighty work. Mighty work in Israel. Now, I think we have a high probability of seeing Omer ushers in Palestinian state this year. I didn't say we will, but I think we have a high probability. And if we see that, we'll probably see the second one, which is catastrophe hits America. If America forces Israel to give the Palestinians a state, if America splits Israel, God will split America. And that means we're going to see a massive earthquake down the middle of the country, an Madrid Fault earthquake. And that, according to Shane Warren, is what starts the judgment, the judgment that brings the great miracles. Also, a great transfer of funds straight out of what we say, uh, Psalm 1322, Proverbs 1322. And sports stadiums fill up. Thousands upon thousands give their heart to the Lord. And no more will we be wondering if we are in the last days. Okay, so let me check my questions here. Okay, where does the Bible say four days or 96 of days of darkness? The Bible says that in Revelation 16, 8, says the sun gets seven times hotter, along with Isaiah 30, verse 26. And then the fifth See, the, the, the audible voice said to me, the seven seals play over seven years. The seven trumpets play over seven months. The seven vials play over seven days. So each of the seven vials is one day. We know that. Um, so in the fourth vial, the sun goes out. That means we have 24, 24, 24. Whatever three times 24 is, is that 96? I think it is, right? So we have 96 hours when the sun is out and it never, ever, ever relights again. Are the two witnesses in the street dead at this time? At, at what time? At what time? Oh, by then, uh, you know, if you're talking about during the time of the 96 hours, I guess the better question I would say is when did the, 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 the two witnesses arrive? From my studies, I believe they arrive on or about or right about the same time the Antichrist sits on the Ark of the Covenant. Because, remember, the, the voice told, I will meet the devil, inch for inch, step for step, pound for pound, everything he does, I'm going to meet him. So when the Antichrist sits on the Ark of the Covenant, proclaims himself God, two witnesses pop out onto the streets of Jerusalem to refute the Antichrist and the false prophet along with the two witnesses. Now, we know that when their when their witness is done, the, the, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, shall overcome them, and kill them, and their bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is Sodom and Egypt, where, where also our Lord was crucified, and they will not suffer their body to be uh, to be buried. So they lay in the street for three and a half days. After three and a half days, the spirit of life enters into them. They heard a voice from heaven saying, 
come up hither. They are ascended up to God before their enemies, and the great fear fell upon their enemies. And their enemies, so that tells me that we're probably talking about uh, within a week, within a week of, of Armageddon, it may be like a day or so before, but the Bible does not tell us exactly when they die, but we do know that they prophesy 1,203 score days. So that's going to be right about at the end, but we don't know exactly. So it's real close to them. And I think I've answered all the questions. And let me uh, let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. And, you know, I, I love these Bible studies. And you know why I, re I love them? Because I need it. I mean, I've studied this stuff, but, I, you know, my brain forgets. <laughs> so I need to go through it again. I'm guessing it's the same as you, with you. Even if you've read it before, my guess is you probably ran across some stuff tonight you probably hadn't heard of before uh, because it's it's lots lots of hours time studying uh, lots of hours lots of hours so anyway um, also I hate to say it but I don't know what it is maybe it's it's tax time you know we're coming up on April 15th but man our donations have just they've just dropped in a bucket lately so if God has blessed you and you can help, um, we really appreciate it. We really need it this time. And yes, it's nice if you can join Prophecy Club nine ninety a month on or more on a regular monthly automatic basis. Uh, but these days, if if you could help with more, we would really appreciate it. I'm, you know, it's 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 uh, it's getting tight. It's getting tight. Um, also want to take a second and tell you about the uh, the prophecy conference. You know, I guess every watchman feels very rejected. And of course, in my position, I've got more than my share of it. So I felt very accepted. I think it helped me to see that I've been accepted. I had many people come up to me and shake my hand and hug my neck and say, thank you for Prophecy Club. You know, I got started on Prophecy with you, or I heard some speaker out there, or I discovered Prophecy Club 20 years ago. I heard all kinds of those stories. And I know that the ministry is not being ignored, even though sometimes I think it is. But I was greatly, I was greatly blessed. Blessed to see how many people we are reaching, how many people are listening. Um, I thought my two talks that I gave were very well received. Um, I think I was well received by the people and also the other speakers there. Um, maybe I'll even be invited back. <laughs> of course, they say this is the last one they're going to have, but we're going to try to see that that's not the case. Uh, anyway, I, I love them and I love you. And I really look forward to spending eternity with us. Uh, I don't think we have long. I don't think we have long till we'll meet each other on the other side. And when we do, it's going to be an eternity and we can rejoice. We can rejoice and rejoice. In the meantime, we need to serve the Lord, try to win as many people as we possibly can. And what I want to pray for you today is for souls. I've seen this and I know you have too. We've seen this where we prayed. And we've said, Lord, send me someone to minister to. Sure enough, he does. So I'm going to say it this way. Lord, open doors for the people that watch this, be it live or recorded. Open doors for them to give their testimony about how they received Jesus. Open doors for them to be able to lead someone to the Lord and to pray the sinner's prayer with them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and thank you for watching.